In this video, I'm going to show you how I measure and mix my epoxy. Use the description box for resources. You can pause to read my supply list. Here are all the different cups that I've used to mix my epoxy. Um, we start here with the little medicine cup. It measures 30 mils. The next is a jello shot cup, plastic jello shot cup. Um, this one is from Amazon and it's um, clear and nice and sturdy. The last one is also from Amazon. I really didn't like it. I haven't used it in a while. Um, it's very flimsy and hard to mix and it has grooves and I don't like that because I feel like the epoxy can hide in those grooves. This one's nice and sturdy. I love to mix in it. I also like to mix in this one. It's very sturdy and the medicine cup is actually pretty good as well if you're using a small amount like for just one coat on one cup. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a cup that doesn't come with measurements to mix your epoxy directly into. I really don't like scraping my epoxy from one cup to the other. I like to pour all of my epoxy into one cup. So I'm going to show you how I get measurements onto my cup that doesn't come with measurements by using water. You can add black sharpie to your measuring cup before you add the water to help you find the line, but I normally don't. So then you'll just want to pour your measuring cup of water into your mixing cup, and you're going to bring that mixing cup to the edge of the table so you can mark perfectly level where your line is, and that's where you're going to shoot um, to put your part A epoxy. Once you have your line marked, you're going to leave your mixing cup with the water and go get more water into your measuring cup, the same amount that you used the first time. So we have 20 more mils and we're gonna pour that into the mixing cup and we're gonna bring it to the edge of the table and mark that spot at the water line. And that's where you're going to shoot for your part B epoxy. Once you have both lines, you can dump the water out of your mixing cup. What you do next is personal preference. You can tap the cup dry and just wait until all the water droplets are gone, or you can take a paper towel and wipe the inside. Just be careful not to get any fibers in there. I like to use a damp paper towel. I've never had any fibers stick, so sometimes I wipe and sometimes I don't. It really just depends on how I'm feeling. And here we are, a cup that is marked for part A and part B epoxy. So here I am with my part A already in. Now I'm going to pour in my part B. Part B is in, and it's the thinner of the two liquids. So I always like to pour it into my cup second because it sits right on top and you can see beautifully that I measured each to the line appropriately. It does appear that there's more in the bottom that's because the very bottom of the cup is very skinny and doesn't hold much liquid. So I'm pretty sure that those are very even. When I mix my epoxy, I am careful not to stir my epoxy in a circle. Instead, I zigzag my popsicle stick as I scrape the bottom of the cup as well as the sides of the cup. Be careful not to lift your popsicle stick too much. Be careful not to mix too quickly. I wouldn't say that I mix slow, but if you really get going, you will incorporate bu bubbles into your mixture. Continue to scrape until it is very well incorporated. You'll want to make sure and scrape your popsicle stick multiple times, as well as scraping the sides of your cup. When you put your popsicle stick back down, be careful to go along the edge and not to incorporate bubbles. This is the only time I do go in a circle, but I make sure my popsicle stick does not pull in any air. Then I just keep stirring with the zigzag motion back and forth, back and forth, and you'll be able to feel the mixture getting thinner. That's a stir, no stir. You can see the bubbles already. Just go back and forth, zigzag, zigzag. That's where the good stuff is. And once all of this is incorporated in a homogeneous mixture, you will see that it will be clear. Okay, here we are. My mixture is nice and clear. 
It is definitely a homogeneous mixture now. You can tell how thin and loose and runny it is. It is completely incorporated. Once my mixture is completely incorporated and 100% mixed, I will set my mixture into a warm water bath to remove the remaining bubbles that occur during the mixing process. And here you just see me checking for streaks. I bring the liquid up to the surface and check it to see if I see anything that doesn't appear to be mixed well. And it does appear to be homogeneous. So I don't always use a warm water bath. Sometimes I will if I notice my mixture has a few more bubbles, but you really don't want your water too warm and you don't want to leave it too long because your mixture will start to get thick and it's very hard to manipulate and that's not what you want when you're putting it on your cup. But here you can see some bubbles popping quickly and that's the purpose of the bath. So if you do it, it's up to you. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. Thank you so much for being here. And remember, if you're a beginner at working with epoxy, you will get better. It just takes experience and you will learn. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time.